In this clip, we're going to finish out the animation cycle. So we're just going to pick up right where we left off in the previous clip. Let's actually go ahead and just play this animation, and we can take a look at it here in the viewport. So you can see the very basic idle animation that we've created. Now you'll notice that there's just a little bit of jitteriness or popping that's happening in this cycle. So it's not really completely smooth, and it might be a little bit hard to see, but you can still really see it once it jumps from frame 33 back to frame one. There's just a not very smooth motion that's happening. So let's actually go ahead and go over the process of how we can fix this. So let's pause the animation, and we'll just jump to frame one here. And what we'll do is select our character's root control, highlight it, and let's go up here to Windows, Animation Editor, and let's open up the Graph Editor. All right, and we'll just move the Graph Editor up here just so we can see it a little bit better. Now, the first thing that we need to do is we actually need to cycle this animation because right now, basically what we're doing is we are playing the animation from frame one to frame 33. And since our time slider is only set to frame 33, Maya is automatically just going to loop the animation back to frame one, which is giving us the appearance of a looping cycle. But in reality, the animation really only goes to frame 33 and completely stops. So what we can actually do to very easily cycle this animation is we can go up here to curves and we can choose post infinity and let's hit cycle. And as we hit that, you'll notice that nothing really changed in the graph editor. And that's because we need to go over here to view and we need to enable infinity just so we can see the curves there stretch out in the graph editor. And now what we'll do is go up here to curves again. We'll choose post infinity and cycle as well, just to make sure that we do have it cycled back the other direction in our animation. So we can see the nice smooth curves that we're getting. Now what we can do now is just to see this in action if we minimize the graph editor. And let's just real quick expand this time slider, maybe to around a value of just 60 or so, just real quick to take a look at what this does to this animation. So basically Maya has automatically just cycled it for us, even though our keyframes only go to frame 33, since we enabled the post infinity cycle there, Maya is automatically just going to continue that animation along the timeline. Let's actually bring our time slider back to frame 33. All right, and we'll bring this value over here to frame 33 as well. Now the main reason that we wanted to actually cycle this animation within the graph editor is because that's going to give us a direct view of how these curves are flowing within the graph and allow us to see any type of popping that may be happening because the shape of our curves might not be completely smooth. So if we actually bring up the graph editor here and let's hit the rotate X value, press F on our keyboard. You can see that we have the graph continuing on, so you can basically see how this curve is going to be flowing throughout the entire animation. Now, this is what we want to see. We want to see a really nice, smooth, rounded curve happening between these transitions here. So you can see we have a really nice, smooth curve all the way through, basically endless, since we are cycling this basically an infinite amount. We can see it just a really nice, smooth curve all along the graph. Now, if we go ahead and hit the translate Y value, press F on our keyboard to frame in, we're not getting a smooth curve. We can take a look at the keyframe on frame one and the keyframe on frame 33. You can see how we're getting this sort of motion in the curve right here, how it kind of goes up, flattens out, and then goes back up. And that's going to give us a slight pop in the animation because basically the animation is going to slow out and then slow into the next area of the curve. And again, that's what's going to give us that really bad popping or that jittery motion that happens as we play the animation. So all we need to do is let's go ahead and select the last keyframe, hold shift, select the first keyframe. And then now what we want to do is we want to select one side of the tangent handle on this side, holding shift down, and then one side of the tangent handle on this side, 
and then we just want to rotate them. And we want to smooth them out on both sides. And since we have the post infinity and pre infinity cycle turned on, we can see exactly how this curve is going to be flowing. So we've just smoothed that out and create a really nice transition for the translate Y, which is going to get rid of any type of popping or jitteriness that might occur. Now, this is something that you want to make sure that you go through really all of your control curves and take a look at the channels just real quick and make sure that they're really nice and smooth. Now, you'll notice that it doesn't look like this curve has been cycled. So let's go ahead and highlight it, go to curves, and we actually want to go to pre infinity cycle just to make sure that we can see it cycled in that direction as well so we can get a direct look at this really ugly curve that we're getting here. So this is another area where we want to smooth it out. So we'll hold shift down, select that keyframe, hold shift down, select that keyframe. And then what we want to do is just begin smoothing these tangent handles out. So we'll hold shift, select that tangent handle, select this tangent handle, and just rotate it and smooth out that curve. All right, so that's going to give us a really nice smooth curve all the way along this animation. Now, what I'm going to go ahead and do is just pause the clip here. And I'm going to go through the rest of my curves now that you guys kind of understand what you need to look for. You just want to look for some of those sort of ugly curves, how they're sort of slowing in and slowing out and not giving a really nice smooth curve all the way out through your entire cycle. So you want to spot those channels. You want to go ahead and select each one of the keyframes and just make sure you smooth out that curve. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for the rest of my control curves. All right, so I've gone through the process of going through all of the rest of the control objects and opening up the graph editor and just making sure that they're really nice and smooth. So I went through things like his elbows, his hands, as well as the sword over there, just to make sure those curves in the graph editor were really, really smooth. So now let's go ahead and play this animation. And you can see we've really smoothed this out. So it's looking like a much cleaner, a much smoother cycle. Now, if we actually take really close attention to the animation, you're still going to notice a very, very small pop. And that's simply because it's basically displaying the exact same pose twice. If we actually go ahead and just highlight any one of these control objects, if you remember right, we have a keyframe on frame 33 and a keyframe on frame 1. Those poses are exactly the same. So our timeline goes to frame 33 and then jumps back to frame 1. So basically what's happening is that it's hitting the keyframe on frame 33, it's displaying this pose, it's jumping back to frame 1, displaying that pose again, and then continuing the cycle. So that's going to give us a one frame hold, which is going to be really hard to spot, but if you really take close attention, you might see that small little pop that's happening. So all we need to do is we need to go to our time slider. We'll select this little box right here and just drag this time slider back one frame. So we actually want the animation to end on frame 32. So if we actually scrub this animation forward a little bit, you can see it hits the frame 32, goes to frame one, and there's still just a little bit of motion happening on our character. So there's never that one frame hold there's always just a little bit of motion. So that's going to help us create a, an even cleaner cycle for us. So there we go. So in a really, really short amount of time, we've created a decent looking idle animation. We only spent really a few minutes on this idle animation, but you can see some of the techniques you can use and just making sure that as long as the first and last pose of the cycle are exactly the same, it's going to allow you to create a really nice smooth cycle. So we learned a little bit about how to use the graph editor to make sure those curves are nice and smooth. We learn about how we want to cut that last frame out of the animation to get rid of that one frame hold. So now that we've learned a really great way of creating a cycle animation inside of Maya, in the next module, we're going to learn how to animate with constraints.